All right. So for those of you who have logged in recently, you may have noticed a little something in your navigation screen. If you scroll past the Thermia Fractures, eh, Opticore Vandal. It's a pretty good weapon. We don't need it. However, we don't need it yet. We're not focused on this. We don't have to worry about this. The most important thing that we're looking at right now, if you scroll over to the right, there's a big giant meteor looking circle thingy. We'll scroll down. That's Plague Star. We, ha we are coming back to Plague Star, guys. Plague Star is an event where... You you can pick up the two most powerful melee weapons in the game, Plague Crypath and Plague Kiwar. These are strikes for Zaws that you need in order to make the best weapons in the game. Bar none. Bar none. If you're not using a Zaw pole arm, you I mean, if you care about min-maxing, if you care about having the best weapons to take the full potential of whatever it is that's in the game that can currently be offered, you want these weapons. Melee 3.0 doesn't exist until it happens. It's been promised for three years and it's still not here. So you know what? I don't care. Plague Crypath and Plague Kiwar are probably the best two weapons in the game. One Plague Kiwar makes a staff, not as great. Plague Crypath, a lot better. It makes a polearm. We want to do these. But before we do that, we have to make sure that we get our email from Lotus. I accidentally already opened mine, so we need two things. We need Eidolon Phylaxis, and we need Infested Catalyst. Both of these need to go into our inventory gear, and I'll show you that in a few seconds. But what these do is that these increase the HP and the difficulty of the boss for Plague Star. It'll bring it up to about level 80, so this is not possible to do for everyone, but if you want to max out rewards for every run, you do need to make a couple of these before each run. So let's just claim these. Let's do another few. Infested Catalyst. These are the easy ones. These, you only need resources from other stuff that you've been doing in the game. So if you've been doing regular missions in the game, you pick up Plastids, Nanospores, and Ferrite. As long as you got yourself to Saturn, you should be able to pick up all of these. Eidolon Phylaxis is a little bit more difficult. You need to... This is only made from Cetus stuff. So you need Iridite, Grok Jewel, and Nisslepod. The last two are pretty easy to get. Iridite, sometimes, I know in my experience when I was first starting out doing Cetus when it first came out, I needed to go specifically into missions just to farm Iridite. Because these run out very quickly, especially if you're farming Luminous Die for fish. So let's just make a few of these. We'll go over to our arsenal. Our gear, this is how we equip the Phylaxis. Uh, infested Catalyst, Phylaxis. Phylaxis, here we go. And that's how you do it. That's how you equip these. Notice how it'll only send you 10 at a time. You actually have more than 10, but you can only use four in a mission anyway, so don't worry too much about it. Go into your gear wheel, you clip it onto your gear wheel. My personal builds, my personal build recommendations for these are Loki, which I'm going to be doing this run on, Slow Nova, which I have. Slow Nova, I can show you my Slow Nova. The only thing you care about is is duration. Um, enemy radar, yeah, I have enemy radar. You would actually be using corrosive projection for this, but just don't worry about it. All right. And if you'll notice, I'm using Arcane Resistances. This boss does a lot of toxin damage, and we just don't want to have to deal with the procs at all, ever. That's why you get Arcane Resistance. Instead of using Arcane Energize, yeah, I mean, you could use Arcane Energize if you had it. If you don't, don't worry about it. Bring as many health pizzas or mana pizzas as you possibly can. I have those already, so... But Arcane Resistance makes it so you don't take Toxin Damage. Slow Nova is good because she makes the boss slower. She increases the vulnerable faces and makes them longer. And she's just kind of all around good frame. In addition, her three can also teleport the e escort part of the mission. We'll see that late. We'll see that part later, but it's very buggy for me. And some people know how to do it. Some people don't. It's not my preferred method, but I do usually bring Nova into my Plague Star runs. Another excellent option is Rhino, which I don't apparently have a loadout for. Let's pretend he's Chroma. Uh, Chroma is good simply because he does a ton of damage. 
if you're do if you're familiar with doing eidolons or if you're familiar with doing profit taker chances are you already have a chroma build that's capable of doing this in chroma's case you just pretty much stack strength and you're good same idea with rhino you stack strength and duration what you do is you use Rhino's 4 to stop the boss when one of his vulnerable phases is up. That's when he opens up one of his mouths. Chroma, he's just there for damage. Rhino is there to give your whole team damage. Nova is there to slow down the boss and also to give your team damage. What I'm going to be personally doing, which is probably what the least number of people really understand about doing a Plague Star speedrun, is Loki. You can use his switch teleport to switch teleport the escort phase which makes it significantly faster nova 3 can also kind of do it but eh, it's buggy switch teleport is very important on loki unfortunately he doesn't really offer much else to his team other than only to make this mission faster so unless you have people who you're c more comfortable doing this plague star speed runs with i would actually avoid this nova rhino and chroma are probably your best bets in a pub but Unfortunately for us, we're going to be using Loki in a pub. So, my personal weapon recommendation for this is if you have a super kitted out uh, high fire rate gun, you can do that, like Super Vandal or Prisma Gracada. Those work. Personally, I'm going to be using Vectus Prime. You and I mod specifically for Corrosive. And the reason why you mod for Corrosive is because Corrosive damage itself, even without the proc, does the most damage to the boss. All three of the heads are weak to corrosive. You get a 75% damage bonus. Radiation also has a 175% damage bonus, but the problem is, is that it doesn't work if you strip all the armor off the boss, and the boss reduces some radiation damage by 75%. So you're basically um, you're, you're batting 1,000 with radiation. I don't recommend it. Most people will be able to get away with corrosive. Uh, the mods here... Your typical crit gun, I have a ribbon, gives me multi-shot and crit chance, that's like cool or whatever. No hunter munitions because the boss is going to be immune to slash procs. It is not affected by status effects, but it is affected by warframe skills. Again, Nova, Rhino, and Chroma are all really good. But in my case, you can swap out the fast hands if you want to do more corrosive damage. I also have a super vandal, but... I'm not going to be using that on this run. My rattle guts, this is my kit gun. Again, same idea. Loaded for corrosive. Star and this is my Zaw. This is my Zaw made of, out of a Plague Cry Path part. It does not have a stance because stances mess up your auto attack when you have a high attack speed maiming strike set up. And I don't recommend... And if you really care, notice how this has five formas in it already on top of being gilded and that's only so i can get rid of the stance because the stance fast attack animation while sliding stance is messing up what can i say uh for your companion it doesn't matter too much a lot of people bring their crit cats that's a good idea i have death cube because i don't feel like changing it you can bring helios if you want you can bring carrier if you need ammo if you don't have ammo pizzas whatever all right, so we're going to just go load up onto Cletus here. Man, everybody wants to do this. Everybody wants to do this mission. It's almost as though it gives good rewards. All right. If you're wondering where the rewards are, they drop from Nakak. Operational Supply. Normally, she does not have anything other than Browse Wares. It'll just bring you to the screen, to the flash screen, but that's not what we're here for. Operational Supply. You fast track to Nakak, and then you buy her offerings. So she's got a couple of good options. Exodia Contagion and Exodia Epidemic are also pretty good sellers. She sells Cetus Wisps, but those aren't as essential now that... Anko will sell them. Centurum and Nith, I don't recommend buying these. You can you can farm them yourselves. If you're farming Plague Star, you can probably also buy these. She also sells Snipetron and Ether Daggers, which are no longer on sale from the market. You can pretty much only get them from here. They're good for MR, but they're Snipetron Vandal, which is strictly better. Ether Daggers is not a particularly great weapon, but 
it exists. You know what? I need to I need to get my I need to get myself one of these. What? Bullshit. Oh right. I spent all my standing last time. Fulmination is okay. If you like explosive weapons like Prisma Angstrom, which came back four weeks ago from Barrow, I think. Sacrifice is also a really good mod for people who have primed regen for their sentinels. Forma, also a decent buy. It's like it's it's okay. It's whatever. But really, the 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 real the real goal here. This is this is Plague Crypath. Plague Crypath and Plague Giwar. These are strikes for your Zals. These determine which Rivens you can use. Right? Nanospores, Plastids, Tier Azerite, Pyrotic Alloy. You're going to have to spend a little bit of time farming in Cetus if you want these. If you're already at Saturn, you probably already have the Nanospores and the Plastids. Plague Giwar, same idea. Escher Devar and Copyright Alloy. You're going to need to farm a little bit of Cetus for these. Exodia Contagion and Exodia Echid Epidemic. These are also pretty good. This one, Epidemic is a CC, and Exodia Contagion is a high damage blast that does more damage the further it travels, but it can also do self damage. If you wonder where you get the Phylaxis blueprint from, you get it from Nakok. The Infested Catalyst comes from the Dojo, and I'm not going to be able to show that because I'm going to load into a mission in a few seconds. Uh, the if you want to spend your operational standing on rare fish parts, that's that's one way to do it. If you really hate fishing, but let's just load up and, and oh, also forma. These are pre-built forma. If you do one fully phylaxis and one fully catalyzed run, you get 3,000 standing, you get one forma. So that's basically one forma per run. If that's what you need, especially since there is the the three forma night wave going on right now, you need three of these. So you need to do this at least three times if you want to do the night wave. But let's move on. We'll go ahead and move on to the mission now. Let's just put this on public because we're beginning doing this on public. All right, Kanzu, what have you got for me, dude? Oh god. Oh god. Oh god, he's talking to me. Oh god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cetus must survive, dude. Yeah, we get it. <sighs> oh my god. Why? Why? This is how we learned that Kanzu's uncle was is probably the voice of the infested, unfortunately. Poor guy. So scroll down a little bit, Plague Star. I also recommend putting on Archwing. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. Hmm. So the first part is going to be a basic seek. You had to go into any one of the caves. The caves will look different than normal. Rather than having the original cave uh, layout, it'll look like it's underground. It'll look like it's there's going to be underground more underground stuff. It's going to look like it's outside, but it's actually all underground. Speaking of iridite.
Got it. Make sure you don't drop this. If you drop this, it's going to be really annoying to get back. All right. So we just need to get back out. Ah! If you don't have a hockey, and for the second part, it's a defense. It's a defense. Be careful. Flame blades are bugged. But, eh, you'll be fine. So, normally what you would have to do here is you would have to open up your gear wheel and click on these manually. But if you have them hotkeyed, if you have, if you already have them hotkeyed, you can just press your hotkeys over and over. And you'll fill up all four at the same time. All right. So let's just defend this for three minutes, dude. I think I have Vazarin. Okay, good. So I can immediately revive people if I want to. What's our team comp for this? Saren, Nidus, Garuda. So no Nova. No Rhino. No Chroma. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's fine. That's fine. It's fine. Not everyone has to be meta. Not everyone has to do three minute runs. It's fine. This is fine. This is fine. Oh, okay. All right. This is fine. See, the best thing about speedrunning this mission is having to wait for three minutes for no reason. But it's fine. Fuck out of here. Yeah, 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 we get it. The Nexer needs more time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just, yeah, let's just, you had to defend this for three minutes. <sighs> this is extremely exciting. Riveting gameplay. Oh, poor guy. Poor guy. Oh man, I'm s I suck. All right, so this is we're about to start phase three. This is ooh Kuva, nice. This is the part where Loki is most useful for. The whole point of Loki is for this part. Is for the escort mission. We're going to escort the fuck out of this guy. Um, if I didn't fly over him.
Also, if you're Vazrin, you can make the drone invulnerable by dashing through it. Hey, Argo message. That's nice. All right. That was phase three. All we just do is switch teleport it over and over and over and over and over. For phase four, we had to kill infested. Enemy sense is an okay aura here. That way it lets you know where the infested are, but corrosive projection makes the boss go faster. I'm memeing away. <laughs> hey, we got a reaction. It's big as a house and half as smart. Oh, there he is. He hits a buddy. Oh, by the way, you can't damage him until he actually fully gets out of the boil for reasons. I suck. Really? Oh, thank God, I'm not the only person doing damage this time. Come on. Start being vulnerable again, dude. I'm busy. All right. Woo! It's this dude. Oh man, that's one of the th that's one of the uh, thumper dudes. We had to we had to shoot out the gas vents. So, another boss will show up at 25%. Ow. I don't appreciate that. Oh my god, this would be so much easier with Nova, or Rhino, or literally any of the frames I mentioned. I died. This would be a lot faster on my Super Vandal, but... Not everyone has a Super Vandal ribbon like I do, so this is not the, the thing to bring. Oh my god, this is so slow.
All right, back to killing mobs again. Hey, 75%. Have a smart, big as house. Hey, he's back. What's up, buddy? I died. This would be faster with Nova! Come on! Thank you. I appreciate it. Back to killing more mobs again. Hey, yo! Yo, we're not maggots, dude. That's rude. Alright, last run. He's a little 80 now. Wait, is he a little 80? Oh, 75, whatever. Whoops. Good enough. Oh, thank God, somebody else was doing damage. <sighs> Trust me, this fight's a lot easier with Nova and Rhino. There we go. Ow. There we go. 
And now for our rewards. Ooh, Revenant. That's nice. And that's the end of the run. How long did that mission take? Uh, 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 that's awful. Oh, well. We do what we could. Well. That's the Loki version of how to do the Plague Star fight. 16 minute mission. That's like twice as long as it normally does, but okay, whatever. If you guys like the video, don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe. Leave us a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you'd like to, if you want to discuss anything. Leave us a five star review on Yelp. Swipe right on Tinder. Have a great day, guys.